Alrighty then. The uh, retexturing, realigning of the shanks lines and the retexturing has uh, been finished. And the stummel is uh, complete with the exception of restaining it. Now, for reasons that I'll get into when I do it, whenever you do something like this back down to wood, on an old pipe especially, you're going to trigger an entire cleaning. Not exactly a refinish, but kind of a halfway. And it's because all of this uh, uh, texture here has handling grime packed in the grooves. There's, you've all seen it, any of you that have handled uh, uh, sandblasted pipes, and it's gray. And then of course where we're going to uh, recolor this and it'll look new. There won't be any gray in there. So that'll be a giveaway. And the only way to set that right is to scrub the rest of this down to get rid of all the crud before restaining this part. And the, the getting rid of the crud tends to fade it a little bit. So there's things you do to bring the, the, uh, the original appearance back. There's also some, uh, on the top here looks like some significant uh, carbon accumulation and we'll see what we can do about that when we get there but anyhow this for the most this is uh, the be the beefy part of this is done and we're ready now to work on the stem itself and there's two things I want to talk about when it comes to stems one is the sequence of uh, operations and here's what I mean Pretend this is a stem that has been finished in its exterior dimensions in every way, with the exception that at the very end here of the button, there's just a simple round hole, just a little pinhole in the end of that. And you've got to now cut a slot in there. Usually you use one of these guys, right? You've all probably have one or seen them at least. And you cut that zip like so, and then take uh, some sort of a saw. There's a, a million little types of wax saws and wire saws and modified hacksaw blades and you name it. There's You think of it, people have used them. And then you go after it. Well, that's actually a uh, deceptively tricky operation to get that lined up exactly the way you want. And often you'll get a little twist in it or a little tilt or something. And if you do, and the outside of the stem has already been finished, it's complete in terms of material removal, you don't have any space there to accommodate the crooked slot. In other words, you can't continue to shape the outside of the stem in order to bring the slot into alignment. Your SOL, there's, it, you just can't do it. There's not the material there and you have to uh, be satisfied with a crooked slot. And you might have done A plus work until that, everything until the very last step. And you go zip and you, holy crap, what a, oh man. That's a sickening feeling. However, if you hold off doing the shaping until after you cut your slot, then you can shape the stem to the slot. And what I mean by that is first of all you'll cut it with this little saw zip and then deepen it so you've got a true V and then once that is you're happy with the result it's good you can then shape the pipe to the slot and it's very easy to do well easier to do that because then you can put guidelines down the sides of this rod that tell you what is level and flat and straight and all of that. So you're working with like construction lines, what they used to, before drafting was taken over by machines and humans did it, they were called construction lines, which are, remember is a 6H pencil we used for that. Anyway, so cut your slot and finish it first, your, your funnel, finish it first. And then when you're happy with it, even if it was a little off to start with, you just, rotate it a bit and get it level again and then when you begin to shape 
you're, you're good to go. So that's one. And the second thing, I wanted to talk to you about my method of slot cutting, which is different than what I showed you here a minute ago or, or with the saw blades, wax blades and hacksaw blades. I've got all that stuff from years gone by. Gosh, I've got all kinds of these things from uh, modified fret files for guitars to saber saw blades with teeth on them. And I've been there, done that. It's, as you know, if you've tried it, it's a pain in the ass. It just, it's not that fast or simple or reliable or whatever. However, I found a way that is. I think I talked about this in one of the very first videos, but um, we're going to get into it a little more depth here with a different camera angle in a minute. These are called carving drills or carving bits. And they're actually designed originally for duck decoy makers. They would finish the ends of feather. They, this allows them to get underneath the feather ends on the body of a duck. If you can imagine how many times you did that, but there used to be easy to find on the internet. You just looked under duck decoy carving supplies and you'd get half a dozen hits or more. Lately, the last couple of years, they seem to have dried up. I don't know whether duck decoy, the fad is gone or just what the story is. Anyway, they used to be inexpensive, like three or four or five bucks a piece. Now they're about 15 and I've only been able to find one place that sells them. I was, I've got enough for myself for a good while, but I uh, was looking for somebody else the other day when they said, gosh, I can't locate these things. And I helped them find them online. But so if you can find, if you try this method and like it, get yourself a, a couple of backups for a, a lifetime supply. So anyway, more about these is they actually come in two useful sizes, 1 16th inch, 3 30 seconds which is their biggest one. And that's good for giant pipes. A lot of big guys like pro wrestler size guys like giant pipes because to them it's the same as an ordinary size pipe is to the rest of us, right? So they have a tall slot. And this is for fine enough that you can get into uh, the group two size pipes with this thing. But they don't make a 530 seconds, which is splits the difference. I wish they did. They don't. So if you decide you want to set yourself up to do this slot and funnel exercise uh, using the rotary method here, you're going to need to get an extra one of these fat guys and then grind it yourself. You can probably, come on, focus. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, there's a step right there. And from there to about here has been ground down while it's spinning, of course, and it's made it thinner. So this is now, that is uh, uh, one sixty-fourth of an inch smaller here than it is here, which is in pipe slot terms quite a bit. So don't worry about having ground the spirally part uh, as part of that exercise, it doesn't affect how well it works because you're going to be pumping these things in and out, back and forth, and the, there's plenty of cutting edges left, even though you'll have dulled them up here a little bit. So anyway, uh, next order business is to actually show you the process, and I'm going to move the camera to the other side and attempt to set it up so that it's looking in a useful direction for somebody who's trying to learn how to do this as opposed to just watching me do it from a distance where all you would see is kind of fiddly, you know, mo hand movement. Uh, this way, it'll be like you're an extra pair of eyeballs sitting on my shoulder and can actually watch it be done. That's if I can get it set up to do that. I think I can. So anyway, going to try. Got to do a little furniture rearrangement or tripod movement and light stands here, but it's no big deal. So I'm going to do that and be back with you in just a minute. 